بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد لله في نعمه يكافي مزيدا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي بجلال وجهك والعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحسيتنا أن عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك فلك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في كل وقت وحين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الملل العلى إلى يوم الدين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد حتى تلك الأرض ومن عليها أنت خير الوالدين الحمد لله We speak about the day of judgment They mention that يعني كثرة الأسماء تدل على شرف المسمى But something that bears a significant amount of names that ordinarily serves to indicate the nobility of the entity of the affair. And the Day of Judgment, it has a great number of names. And some of the ulama that they mention that the names for the Day of Judgment yani, are more than the letters in the Arabic alphabet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forth yani, a great number of names for the actual Day of Judgment. Yani, Yawm al-Qiyama, Yawm al-Deen, Yawm al-Tanad, Yawm al-Taghabun, Yawm al-Tama, Yawm al-Sakha, Yawm al-Jama'a. A great number of names Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this um, great and inevitable day by. In our last sort of gathering, we sort of looked at the topic of the journey of the soul. And again, this is a further stage inside of the soul's ultimate journey back to the point of eternality. The Imam Abdullah bin Alawi bin Muhammad al-Haddad, when he spoke inside of his great work, which is Sabil al-Dikar, the path of those who take heed, or the path of those who remember, which is translated as the lives of man, he spoke about sort of five distinct stages of the actual journey of the soul of man. And in the first stage is the world in which the soul was created. Like one of the great Imams, radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Sahib, bin Abdullah Tustari, when he was asked and where was the soul prior to his descent into the world, he says it was what? Suspended in fada, suspended inside of space, in its own world, the world of the imperative realm, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the world of the ama. That's where the world was. That's where the soul was. And thereafter, the second stage of the soul is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the soul to descend down to its form, to attach to its form inside of the lower realm, inside of the dunya. And so that's 120 days as we learn in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, inside of the wombs of our mother, and the soul is then brought by the great, great angel and now connected to its form. And then it exists inside of the world of the womb and it exists inside of the, the womb of the dunya until an appointed time. And that appointed time is the issue of death. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin and at that point, there's a departure, a separation of body and soul, and that is the clinical definition of death. The ulama inside of our sort of theology, when they define death, they say death is mafaraqat al-ruh bil jasad. When there's a clinical separation between body and soul, that is our clinical definition of death. Just like our clinical definition of life is when there's a connection between body and soul, 120 days inside of the womb of the mother. But that is tantamount to the second life, the journey of the soul. And then we sort of discussed in our last session the issue of the barzakh, the issue of the will, the barzakh, this sort of interspace, intermediate realm, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخُونِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبَعَثُونَ In front of them, or as he literally says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, behind them, before them, is a barzakh, is an intermediary realm, إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبَعَثُونَ Until the day when they're resurrected, judgment. That is the fourth stage of the human being, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereby destroys the human soul. Every soul shall taste of death, and every soul shall ultimately be rendered into a state of oblivion, non-existent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, upon the nefkh of the surah, upon the sounding of the horn, the horn of the grand angel Azrael, and that is the termination of the third life of the soul. And then the soul will thereby be resurrected, recreated, brand new once again into this fourth realm, which is our topic today, Judgment Day. Judgment Day which has a beginning, defined beginning, and likewise Judgment Day which has a defined end. Now, 
okay, define them. And thereby, the point of eternality, into the fifth and final realm, realm of the human soul. It's placed into the world of eternality. Either eternal bliss or eternal damnation. Eternal bliss in Jannatullah, inside of the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for an eternity. Or eternal damnation inside of Narullah al-Muqadam, inside of the well-lit fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for an eternity. They are the five distinct stages in the journey of the soul of the human being. The most important stage, no doubt, is the stage in which all of us are now in now which is the second life of man. This is our second life, the second life, the second stage or journey inside of the soul journey of the soul. Because this short, extremely brief life, as we will say upon Yawm Al-Qiyamah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says upon the Day of Judgment, Kem bifta. The question is asked, how long did you remain inside of the world? And what is the answer? Yawm. Aw ba'da yawm. We remain for a day or part of a day. Or as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Balagh, maximum extent. We were there for a day or a part of a day. No more than that. The nature of the dunya, this world in which we're in. And then the great question is then, how then do we spend this day? The dunya, that's it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our life, what a day. That's all we remain. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, was granted, was mentioned to his sahaba that he was granted, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, that his ummah was granted a day. That the lifespan of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I pleaded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for increase. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me half of a day as an increase. I, the entire duration of Ummatul Muhammadiyah is one and a half days. That's it. The Ummat of the Prophet sallallahu And here we're not speaking about the lifetime of the Ummah. We're speaking about the lifetime of each and every single one of us. Balal, maximum extent, a day or part of a day. And we've got to remove ourselves from the illusion. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu comes for. He comes to remove ourselves from the illusion of the dunya. Yawm al-Qiyamah is a very long day. Yawm, very long day. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu wa rada, he says it's called the Yawm, a day, because after it there is no night. No night whatsoever. And the nature of that day in and of itself, it's measured in millennia. Millennia. Measured in millennia. It's not measured by days in terms of sort of abstract time. Or months, years, decades centuries, millennia. That day in and of itself in terms of abstract time, it's longer as the moderns will sort of have us believe, lend us to believe that one day is longer than the entire history of the human being upon the face of the earth. Just that one day in and of itself. That's what you will experience, that's what I will experience. And we ask the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to render that experience blessed, <coughs> beautiful and brief. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala renders, renders that at our experience. <coughs> to quote, quote unquote, a long story short, all of those realms, those five realms, the realm before we descended into this world, this world in which we're in, the nature of the barzakh, the interspace, the life, life of the grave, the nature of qiyamah, and the nature of eternality, it revolves around one being, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. And what we determine as good, or as evil. What we determine as that which is blessed or that which is wretched, it all relates to our proximity and connection to him in each and every single one of those realms. And so we try to sort of look at the great day by sort of taking a glimpse at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa in that regard. We see a beautiful tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu interaction with that great woman Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha wa Ardaha. A woman in the Hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari who is the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu for eternality. She's the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu in Jannah, in the hadith of Sayyidina Amar ibn Yasir in Al-Bukhari. That is our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha. And we take a glimpse of her life inside of this dunya, radiallahu anha wa ardaha. She has a needle. She says, I borrowed a needle from Hafsa bint Rawaha, radiallahu anha wa ardaha. What is she going to do with the needle? Hadith in the Mustad al Firdausi on the Me, she says, I'm going to sew the clothes of the Prophet. It's one of those nights where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed the moon from the celestial realm. It's a moonless night. 
and pitch black, she's sewing the garment of the Prophet ﷺ. And then she says the needle drops out of her hand. And so she begins to look for the needle, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, and she says she cannot find the needle of the Prophet ﷺ, of Hafsa bint Rawaha, sewing the clothes of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And there she says, enters the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet ﷺ enters the room, she says the entire room lights up. Hakada, <laughs> statement of Aisha in the Muslim of the Dawus and Abu Nu'im in the Tala'il and Nabuwa. The entire room lights up. And Aisha says, she just begins to laugh. Laugh, subhanAllah. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Ma yudhikuki. What is it that causes you to laugh? Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha recounts what has just taken place. But when he walks into the room, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he lights up the entire room. What does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Naam, ya Aisha. Yes, O oh Aisha. Waylun, thumma waylun. Waylun, thumma waylun. Waylun, thumma waylun. Limen la yarani. Or la yandur ila had al wedge. Woe, and I repeat, woe. Woe, and I repeat, woe. Woe, and I repeat, woe to the one who does not see this face. That's what he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In another riwayah, for our topic, Wailun liman la yarani yawmul qiyamah. Woe to the one who does not see me upon the day of judgment. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. Wa sallam. And that is the beginning point of the day, and that is the end point of the day. On that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he's collapsed every single thing in the universe, that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends, in, sends into a state of oblivion. We could deviate into the world of theology when they speak about, with the exception of eight great realities that are going to remain in existence upon that day. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the entire creation back again. Everything will be resurrected. And Allah Ta'ala, when He speaks about life after death, this is not some, some fleeting issue that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala discusses inside of the Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala speaks about resurrection, life after death, 767 times inside of the Qur'an. That is important. 767 times Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is speaking about resurrection, 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 resurrection. Such so that you find people, despite the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this theme over and over again. And Allah ta'ala brings the theme of those who deny resurrection. Maybe this from us, of those who deny resurrection. That when we die, are we going to be, and we're dust? That's like too far out. What's too far out? That we die? No. That we render dust? No. It's so far out, they can't even mention it in Surah Al-Qaf. That's too far out. What's too far out? Are you saying we're going to be resurrected? Allah Ta'ala strikes the example of the one Nasiya Khalqa, that he has forgot his own creation. That when we die, who is the one who's going to bring bones back together? The mawqif is that this is somebody, quote unquote, who's gazing at the face of the Prophet and he has withered bones inside of his hands. See this, withered bones. Who's going to bring this back? When it's dust. And he blows it into the face of the Prophet. Okay. Look at Allah Ta'ala who tells the Prophet in Surah Yasin that the one who will bring it back together is the one who brought it, brought it in the first place. That's Allah Ta'ala. Just as He created in the beginning, He created once again, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa huwa ahwan as He says. And that's easier the second time for Allah Ta'ala. Logic. You create it the first time, it's even easier to create it the second time. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recreate it all the second time. In the chapter of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asked the question, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La uqusimu bi yawmu qiyamah. No, I swear by the day of judgment. Wa la uqusimu bi nafsil lawama. No, I swear by the self reproaching soul, the conscience of man. Ayahsabu al insan al lam najma'i dhamma. Does the human being believe that we will not resurrect his bones? 
not reconstructing. Bala qadirina. No, we are well able and nusub. We are banana. To reconstruct the human being right down to his fingerprints. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You are you. Everybody shall be brought back once again. The Prophet sallallahu told us the imperative nature of this reality. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. When he informed us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a tradition. When he informs us that the archangel is Serafil. The angel of the horn is Serafil. He is the one who has the horn. And the Prophet sallallahu says, the horn right now is in the mouth of Sayyidina Israfil alayhi salam. Israfil, huge angel. That's the first angel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. The first angel created was Israfil. And right now, Israfil, he has the entire world inside of his mouth. Inside of the horn. Huh? The Prophet has informed us that his head of Israfil is at the height of the universe. Gazing right at the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the feet of the archangel Israfil are at the very bottom of the universe. He's the size of the entire cone, Israfil, the entire universe. And he told us that the horn is in his mouth and he's gazing at the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's where the Amr, that's the first place the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appears inside of the universe, at the throne of Allah ta'ala. And when that commandment is issued, he sounds the horn. Oh, yeah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, oh. When the horn is sounded, intaha, the entire universe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and its laws is collapsed, over, finished. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect the archangel. Oh, yeah. Even the angels themselves, Israfil, will taste of death. Kullu nafs in the Even the great angel Gabriel will taste of death. Kullu nafs in the iqatul maut. Even the angel of death, Azrael, will taste of death, Azrael. As the Prophet ﷺ informs us in a hadith of Abi Shaykh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the collapse of the entire cosmos, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summons the angel of death. And then he asks the angel of death, Man yabqa, who remains? And the angel of death, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jibreel, Gabriel, Mikael, Michael, Israfil, Raphael, and you're a based, insignificant, humiliated slave. Ya'ni nafsa, the Prophet said, meaning himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khud ruh Jibreel. Go and take the soul of Gabriel. Let him taste of death. And then, then Israel, the angel of death, goes to Gabriel, seizes the soul of Gabriel. Itfa nur Jibreel. That's the death of angels. Angel, it's not a separation of soul and body because angels are but soul. Ruh al mujarrad angels. So, what is the death of an angel? The extinguishing of the light of that soul. And then the light of Gabriel is extinguished. Gabriel is 500 forms in a rewire. Gabriel is 600 forms in a rewire. Gabriel is 1000 forms in a rewire. Gabriel is brought crushing down. In a rewire, Katod al Awim comes down the great archangel Gabriel alayhi salam. Tastes of death. Returns back to Rabbul Izzah. Returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man yabqa. Now who remains? Mikhail. Michael remains. Israfil. Israfil remains. Wa abduka al-haqeer al-saghir al-dhalil. And your insignificant, your small, and your base slave remains. Khud ruh Mikhail. Take the soul of Mikhail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Azrael. Yani Mikhail, in the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama asks Jibreel, as we know angels, they come in transmuted form. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, the, the great question, well, if Allah was going to send a messenger, and why would, doesn't he send an angel? That's what Quraysh said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, were he to send an angel as a, man, as a messenger, he would make the angel man. <laughs> transmuting to man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And so when Allah, the Prophet sees Gabriel in his transmuted form, coming as different forms of men, he asks Gabriel, allow me to see you inside of your true form. I want to see you in your true form, in the form Allah ta'ala created you. Gabriel says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you, you, you can't, you won't be able to handle it inside of the dunya, this world, the lower realm. You won't be able to handle it. The Prophet sallallahu says, well, I'll be able to handle it. Gabriel says to the Prophet Sallallahu Our appointment is at Hira, the Mount Hira, the mysterious cave. 
<coughs> so the Prophet ascends Hira. When he ascends Hira, there comes Gabriel. Gabriel manifests at Hira, and then he begins to transmute into original form, the form that he created. One of the forms manifests of Gabriel, original form, Yasud al Ufuq. It blocks out the entire horizon, and the Prophet falls unconscious. When Gabriel brings the Prophet back, now transmuted as man, the Prophet you're a big lad, eh? Gabriel, <laughs> alayhi salam. And the, the prophet, Gabriel says to the prophet, alayhi wa sallam, you think I'm big? You ain't seen my brother, Mikhail. <laughs> you ain't seen Mikhail. Yani, Mikhail is also 500 forms in this riwayah. Saying that my 500 forms equals one of the forms of Mikhail. Yani, yani, the, the mind, the human mind, cannot even fathom something of that size. We can't even fathom it. Huh. Mikhail is brought down. He retains back Azrael. Who remains? Israfil, the angel of the horn. And your abased and humiliated and insignificant slave. Go and take the, what? the soul of Israfil. And then he takes the soul of that angel whose head is at the height of the cosmos and whose feet is at the bottom of the cosmos in Israfil. Who then remains? In the Riwayah, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Now the angel of death comes cowering to Allah. Because he understands what occurs next. Who remains? Abduka, al haqir al saghir al dhalil Your insignificant, abased slave remains. Khud ruhak. Seize your own soul. And that's it. The death of the angel of death. Kullu nafsi in the iqat al He dies. In the riwayah, angel of death said, Had I knew this was the experience of death, I would have never seized a single soul. Note it's metaphor, but he's just trying to tell us, as the Prophet Sassam told us, in the Lilmot La Sakarat, that verily death has a pain. There is a pain and tribulation to death, our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam said. All of that in a split moment that will appear. And that's the nefk of the surah of Israfil in and of himself. When that sword is sounded, the entire universe collapses. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recreate a brand new universe with brand new laws subhanahu wa ta'ala in that universe who is the first one to be recreated muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that's the first one to be recreated sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that's the face that comes forth in the situation of imam sayyuti rahimahullah ta'ala that he comes forth from his grave sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam fully clothed in silk brocade, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, upon the Burak, the great beast of prophecy, surrounded by 70,000 angels. That's how he comes forth from his grave, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Show for the Rasul, look at the exception of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sees, Arshullah, the throne of the divine, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he tells us also at the throne, he sees Moses. Musa alayhi salam holding on to the bottom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. This is how judgment begins. It's the day how it begins. With the resurrection of the Prophet وسلم, the sight of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the sight at the bottom of the throne of Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran alayhi salam. And then the Prophet says, I do not know who was raised first. Was it Moses or was it I? Tawheed? It was the Prophet That's what he said. And the awwalu man yashakku anhu al-qabah. I'm the first one who degree, the grave will open itself up for. And there's the resurrection of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so what is Moses doing standing? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala now has given Moses now a ringside seat of who is the greatest of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's creation. Moses, the great prophet, now witnesses the resurrection of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? Okay, the Moses an exception. Not sent into oblivion at that moment with the sounding of the horn. Because Moses, alayhi salam, he already had his turn in the dunya, in this world, when he stood upon Mount Tur, upon Mount Sinai. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that point, he sent Moses into oblivion. Just a gazing at a mountain upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested divine reality. And the entire mountain comes crashing down. And Moses, alayhi salam, is sent into oblivion. And when Moses returns, is reconstructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Moses is illumined, Moses, his face is illumined. 
just from that, the reflection of the divine. Such that it's mentioned that Moses, Ibn Imran, from that moment to the day he died, he had to cover his entire face. That's the way that he popped until the way, day he died. Why were you to gaze upon the illumined face of Moses? You would die. Banu Israel would die by gazing at the face of Moses. And in short, look at the reality of Moses. When he's just gazing at a reflection, gazing at an imprint, gazing at a tajelli, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And what about the Prophet when he doesn't gaze at no imprint, he gazed at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of the Isra wa Mi'raj. And yet the Prophet Thabit is not sent into oblivion. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. So Thabit sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are those who can gaze, manage to gaze at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're not sent into oblivion. Hakada, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ulama say that's a secret. Why Moses himself in Bukhari and Muslim, every time he's sending the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back, 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 back. Go back to your Lord. Why? Because every time you go back to your Lord, you see your Lord. Uh, and every time you return back to me, I see Allah. the reflection in you. How can that the ulama mention about the secret of why Moses is continually sending the Prophet ﷺ back? This is the resurrection of the Rasul Wasallam, And from him, resurrection proceeds. It all be, people begin to be resurrected from around the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. After him comes Abu Bakr as Siddiq. After him comes Umar ibn al-Khattab. After him comes Jesus Sodomari. After him comes the people of Baqi'ah. After him come the people of Ma'ali. After him come the people Bain al-Baqi'ah wal Ma'ali. Bain al-Mecca wal Medina. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A hadith. The Prophet is telling us who is resurrected first. We ask that Allah Ta'ala allows us to be proximate to him in the Barzakh. That's proximity in the Barzakh to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet has informed us about the nature of resurrection in that the human being is reconstructed right down to the atomic level. You are you and you're reconstructed in the way that you died. The exact way that you died, that's how you'll be brought back to life by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will grow forth from your grave as the Prophet them said in the same way that plant life grows forth from the earth. Human being just grows and grows and grows till his physical form is resurrected like a statue without a soul. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the spirits of the human beings. Where do the spirits of the human beings reside? Inside of the horn of Israfil, one of their places. In the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the horn of the grand angel, Raphael, Israfil, in it, it has fuqub. Fuqub are like holes. And those holes equate to the number of souls created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now when that grand archangel, Israfil, sounds the horn once again, then those souls take flight from his, from his own. And they take flight right down to the body. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, they enter from the khurshum. The soul comes into the khurshum, and the Prophet ﷺ said, it makes no mistake. And you are you. It's, this is not Hollywood. Your soul is inside someone else's body. Uh, this is divine reality, divine TV. You are you, reconstructed right down to your fingertips. Wow. And now you are alive. Uh, who follows? Israfil. Israfil himself descends from the heavens, and that's in Surah Taha. <laughs> On the day when you will follow the da'i, the herald, <laughs> nobody's going to stray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All voices will fall silent to the Rahman. Allah. All you will hear is Hamsa. Hams. What is Hams? Hams in the language of the Arabs, it means whispers. Voices that are silent. But Allah Ta'ala has already said, Khashiyat al-Aswat al-Rahman. All voices fall silent to the Rahman. So what are you hearing then? The ulama said, all you can hear is shh, 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 shh. Footsteps entrained marching towards the mawqif. They're marching towards the stands where they will stand awaiting the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being led by the archangel Israfil. He's the one who leads all human beings to the plains of judgment. The archangel Raphael Israfil. Okay? Here when you arrive at the plains, then you'll begin to see the ahwal of your muqiyamah. 
brand new earth. This is a brand new earth. The Prophet said in Bukhari, he said that it's a brand new earth. He said, Naqiyun Bayda. It is pure and illumined. Nobody has sinned upon that earth ever. Has ever sinned upon that earth. Okay? We exist inside of old earth. Old earth will cast out its burden. As the Prophet informs us in this surah, which is one half of the Quran. Allah Ta'ala says, one half of the Quran, that one surah, despite its brevity, equates to one half of the Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu informed us. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said, I would rather recite with contemplation in Surah Al-Baqarah. Look at the importance of understanding the zilzal, the shaking of the earth. And when the earth, athqalaha, it's burden. That which is weighing down the mother earth, you, I, all of us, human beings, weighing down the earth, it casts everything out. And then the human being, mala, what's wrong with her? Human being is speaking about his wife. What's wrong with her? He's speaking about mother earth, his mother earth. What's wrong? Is that she casts out all of her burden. And from the things she casts out is each and every single one of us. So we stand following the archangel, alayhi salam. Then the Lord informs us, then the heavens, yetashakkak, the heavens begin to be rendered asunder. And then the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, the first heaven. And the angels of the first heaven descend, all of them, the inhabitants of the first heaven. And they surround the plains of new earth. And then the second heaven opens up, angels, concentric circles, third heaven, fourth heaven, surrounding the entire mokif, angels upon angels upon angels upon angels upon angels. And we're marching to what the plains of judgment, Sham, the Levant, may Allah Ta'ala protect it, Syria and the greater territory. Eh? That in New Earth, that's where we will all stand. Eh? In particular, as we heard, quote unquote, these issues of, of chemical of chemical issues, some of them say in the Ghuta in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where the, that chemical issue was. That's called the Ghuta in a place called Jisreen inside of Damascus. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, all people will be gathered in a place called Ghuta. Qareebun min al-Medina yuqalu lahad Damish. Everyone will be gathered in a place called Ghuta, close to a place that is called Damascus. Others say the gathering is at Ilya. Where is Ilya? Jerusalem. A Maqdis. Everyone will be gathered at Beit al-Maqdis inside of New Earth. That's where everybody stands, awaiting judgment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody, without exception. On that day, there's one reality you have to look for. What, that, what is that reality? The face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have to look for his face. You get his face, you're sorted. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Get it just to see it. It's like those blessed people called the companions. All they had to de do was see his face. They saw his face. Their fear is over. As it relates to Yom Al-Qiyamah, the day of judgment. And so therefore to see his face. How then do you find his face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When we're speaking about the first and the last humans, jinns, sprite, animals, plants, minerals, everything is resurrected. The afqa, everything is resurrected. From heaven and earth is all on one plane, awaiting the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how then do you find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam? It's like the tradition inside of Sahih al-Bukhari, al-arwah junood al and souls are arrayed soldiers. If somehow your soul has an alignment, a correspondence to the soul of the Prophet ﷺ, do not worry, and it likes a track. And you'll be attracted despite yourself to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. If you want to move into the world of rationality, how would you find a Rasul amongst the crowd? All you've got to do is look into the heavens. Because when you look into the heavens, you see a standard. That in Sahih Muslim is known as Liwa al -ham, the standard of praise. Don't worry, you'll see it. Standard of praise. It's described as being 1,000 years in height. Allah! 1,000 years in height. It's described as being the width of it from the east to the west. The width of it. It described the toppermost part, which is like the spear of it. Toppermost part of the standard is made out of rubies. Uh, the handle is made out of white gold and green emeralds. In whose hand is that? Muhammad <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Sahih Muslim, that's what the Prophet says. In my hand is the standard of praise. <laughs> Upon it is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. You're not going to miss it. Three flags emanate from it. 
In each of the flags, you see three lines. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Line one. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Line two. La ilaha illallah. Line three. They made out of nur, light. Don't worry. Khalas, inshallah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala allows us to see it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi has mentioned that as beside each line is 90,000 other flags. Beside each flag is far is 70,000 rows of angels. In each row of angels, there are 500,000 angels. Every single one of them glorifying and praising Allah. That's why it's the standard of praise. It's the supreme standard. And look what he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inside the Sahih Muslim, Adam, women dunahu tahta liwa'i yawmul qiyam. Adam and everybody from his progeny is beneath my standard upon the day of judgment. You find the standard, then you find the standard bearer. And the standard bearer is him, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Really important, because seeing him is salvation. And that's why in the tradition, radiallahu anhu, in Sahih Muslim, of saying Anas ibn Malik, Anas ibn Malik asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aina ajiduka? He asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, As'aluka shafa'a yawmul qiyam. I ask you for intercession upon the day of judgment. Saying Anas ibn Malik, I ask that you intercede on my behalf upon the day of judgment. The Prophet sallallahu wa sallam says, Laka that. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Anas wants to make sure it is. Where will I find you then? Just tell me where you're going to be. I need to know where you're going to be, O Muqiyam. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi described the topography of the next will. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi faced with the tajri and the sirat. You're going to find me over the bridge that is erect over the apex of hell. That's the first place. Look at the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first place he tells Anas, you're going to find me on that bridge that is erect over the apex of hell. And hadith 3,000 years in distance. Upon our reckoning, it will take you 3,000 years to get across it. The Prophet says, and then even told us something even more frightening. A headman is safe. It's sharper than a sword. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. Sharper than a sword's edge. I mean, if you stand on it, it will split you in two. What a duck min a sha'ara. What's a duck min a sha'ara? It's more subtle than a strand of hair. I mean, you can't see it. All you see is hellfire, like in Surah Al-Maryam. Ma minkum ila wariduha. Every one of you shall come unto it. Come unto what? Hell. Everyone will come unto hell. And there's a hadith more frightening than that in Tirmidhi. When the Prophet interpreted that verse in Surah Al-Maryam, he said, Ay dakhiluha. You will enter it. Traditional theology says no. Come unto it means you come unto the bridge over hell. Hadith in Tirmidhi, although it's not mutawatir, the hadith says, no, you will enter it, the Prophet Islam says. But alhamdulillah, huh? what did he then say? Then those the believers, Ahlul Nur, the people of light, who draw from his light, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, who draws from Allah Ta'ala's light, Allah Ta'ala, nur samawati wa lard, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then they, khalas, they will escape due to their light. To the point that hellfire begins to plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get it out. It's extinguishing me due to its light. Believers affecting hell, extinguishing hell due to their intense light in the tradition. Huh? And others, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we shall leave the wrongdoers, wrongdoers upon their knees in the midst of hell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You will find me there. How, what is he doing there at the Sirat, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam? The Prophet gives us his own account of the Day of Judgment. The Prophet is standing at the scales, at judgment, at the scales. And he says, when I'm at the scales, I hear the Ummah of the Prophet is sent forth. Now they send forth. Everyone is sent forth. And the Prophet who refuses to sit down. The angels the, and the Prophets, they are on, the great angels are on the right side of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we'll see at Ilya. When we get to the plains of judgment, you see the throne of God, center stage, okay? To the right of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are going to be thrones. From amongst the people upon them thr thrones, and the foremost of them, the prophets themselves. Every prophet has a throne, and he sits to the right of the supreme throne. And the prophets have informed us, every single prophet takes to his throne, sits upon the throne. Illa ana, except I. I don't sit upon my throne. Why? Out of fear, my ummah will be sent to hell. I remain standing. No. 
I gotta make sure that my ummah what escapes what the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he's standing at the scale, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and the ummah now is being removed, and they're all taken towards hell. Huh? The Prophet Sallallahu begins to hear coming from hellfire, the direction of hell, Wa Muhammad. Wa Muhammad. Wa Muhammad. Now the Ummah of the Rasul calling out. Wa means calling out for help. Muhammad. They're calling the Prophet Sallallahu for help. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, when I hear this, I move swiftly to hellfire. When he gets to hellfire, he sees the Ummah in a state. They're in a state, the Ummah. Why? They don't know. Why? Because the angels are just telling them, move. Driving as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sa'iqun wa shaheed. There's two we're going to have with us. Sa'iq wa shaheed. Sa'iq means the one who drives you. The shaheed means the witness. The witness, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa That's the shaheed. As the Surah Al Nisa. The Sa'iq, angels. Driving you. No, no, no conversation. Move. 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 The angels are telling you. And in them, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us of Allah Ta'ala, they say they have hooks of steel, hooks of iron. And you don't listen to them, you feel punishment. And so the Ummah now is at the brink of hell. And all the angels say is move, cross, go, go. How? We see nothing. Move, the angels are telling you. That's Allah Ta'ala. Look at Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. In Surah Zuma, in the end of Zuma, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ Zuma. Those who disbelieve are driven to hell in multitudes. Those who disbelieve, driven. You drive from behind. Angels behind you telling you, move, move, move. Look what Allah Ta'ala says. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ تَقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى جَنَّةِ زُمَرَ But likewise, those who are conscious of Allah are driven likewise to paradise in multitudes. And you do not get to paradise save you got to go through hell. That's the topography of the next world. And so when they're driven to the brinks of what? Of hellfire? What? Move. Just move. What do they do? What's the first instinct of the believer? Wa Muhammad. Wa Muhammad. Wa Muhammad. He says he hears these words, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he moves swiftly to hellfire. He doesn't hesitate, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sure. And think about it inside of his brief life, the day or part of a day. You call upon him, he responds. Call upon him, he responds. And he called upon him, he responds, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he responds there in that mawqif, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he goes, look at, look at the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet has already sussed out what has taken place with his ummah. He's followed by Gabriel in the tradition. Gabriel follows behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes and he jumps right onto hell. Right onto hellfire. He doesn't go and speak and ask what's taking place. Right onto hell. And when he comes down over hell, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the bridge appears beneath his feet. There you, you take the reality of religion. Salvation is at the feet of the Prophet. I mean, show off the reality. Abu Bakr al Siddiq. Abu Bakr al Siddiq. Where is he buried? It's not just next to the Prophet. At the feet of the Prophet. Right at the feet. That's where Abu Bakr al Siddiq is buried. And that's where salvation lies. So now the Ummah. Ah, there's a bridge. There's a way across. And look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, SubhanAllah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He raises his hands to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Al-Yawm, la as'aluku an nafsi. Today I don't ask you for myself. <laughs> when did he ever ask for himself? And we have to know our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When? Someone tell me when he ever, he ever asked for himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Yawm, la as'aluku an nafsi. Today I don't ask you for myself. I don't ask you for Fatima, my daughter. Ummati, ummati. Ummati, ummati. Ummati, ummati. My nation and my nation. That's what he says. And that's what he said in Anas. He said in Anas, the first place you'll find me, the Sirat, right there. The Sirat. As everyone begins to cross the Sirat, and the Prophet showed us different ways we cross the Sirat. He says the fastest of them, like the blink of an eye. And if you were to ask them, Sirat, they'll say, what Sirat? I stepped on and I was on the other side. Uh, 3,000 years. Tired. Difficult. Some of them say 3,000 years. Traditions, I gather. 1,000 ascension. 1,000 plateau. 1,000 descent. Some of them say 500 years. 500 up, 500 down. 500 up, 500 down. 500 up, 500 down. Till you come to the other end. 
But it's 3,000 years. Some people, in the blink of an eye, the prophet Sison said. Some people, bark, like lightning, speed of light. Other people, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can reach al-mursala, like a tornado to the other side. Other people, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like a fast rider upon the swiftest steed, upon horse. Others, he said, Adu. Others are running across. Others, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are walking. Others are upon their knees. Some of them on their knees this way, some of them upon their posterior, calling her cover. All the time, hellfire has dogs. They call the dogs of hell. Akaliba na. Sending them up to bring you down. The tribulation of it. And if people don't survive it, great number, khalas, they're brought crashing down upon their knees from the sirat. That's how they enter into hell. But all along, our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is standing there on the Sarat and he's saying, Allahumma sallim sallim. Allahumma sallim sallim. Look at his dua. As everyone's beginning to cross, Oh Allah, make safe, make safe. Oh Allah, make safe, make safe. Safe passage for them. But every single one of us is crossing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the greatest things we have to wonder about is, and this is sort of our life that we lead, yani, how much yani, yani pain and toil and difficulty we put the Prophet Sallallahu through. That's sort of what our lives are tantamount to. And he has to stand there for every single member of his ummah. Allahumma sallim sallim, Allahumma sallim sallim. There are some who khlas, they don't need the Prophet Sallallahu in that regard like Fatima Zahra, radiallahu anha wa That's why he doesn't ask for Fatima. In the tradition when Fatima comes with Sirat, the angels say, Huddu Absaraka. Everybody lower your heads. Everybody lower your heads. Here comes Fatima Zahra al Batul. How she approaches the Sirat. And she's on the other side, Radiallahu ta'ala anha wa No need. What pain did Fatima bring to, to the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What difficulty did she put the Prophet Sallallahu through? That say nothing. And that's the example, Sayyidina Fatima, Radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha. That's the first place. Uh, the second place, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi in the hole. That's what he said. The second place is the hole. The hole is the life pool of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi And he told us sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith in the Bukhari and Muslim that every Prophet has a life pool. Every single Prophet has a life pool. It's like it's like a pool in which life is given to all of the followers of that single Prophet. Okay, but how many Prophets? How many followers does each Prophet have? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, yani, I saw your Muqiyamah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He sees it. Because one of the most interesting things about the Day of Judgment, of the most interesting things, is that in the Khitab of the Qur'an, when Allah speaks about it in the Qur'an, one, or when the Prophet Sallallahu speaks about it too inside of the Sunnah, Allah and His Prophet speak about the Day of Judgment in the past tense. That it's already happened. That's bewildering. And sometimes you sort of, why in the past tense? The ulama of language is in the past tense because whenever you use the past tense to refer to something in the future, it, you feel the yaqeen, it means certainty. Okay, because the past we're certain about, it's already happened. The future, we may have elements of doubt. And so of the meanings in the language of the Arabs of using the past to signify the future, uh, is certainty of what's going to occur in the future. Although, is it just that? Huh? I mean, there's other ways to express certainty of the future. And sometimes you think about the reality that on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ informed us how we will see our life unfold, our entire life unfold. Okay? You will see it. And not like yeah, a movie from that perspective. But you will see it from beginning to end in sort of divine dimension. DD. That's how you'll see it upon that day. Uh, yani, yani, are you in the midst of it right now? Is this what's playing out? That which you yourself are, are seeing or have already saw upon that day? Upon that, yani, yani, it, it's not as you believe it to be. Remember, the essential nature of the world in Kitab and Sunnah is illusion. That's the essential nature of the world. That it's all illusion. And we are now in the midst of an illusion. And that day, Velika Yomul Haq. That's what Allah says. That is the day of reality. That's not illusion. That's the Hayawan in the Quran. That is true, higher life. Uh, that's not. It's not death. Like in this. Tabaraka Ladi Biadihil Mulku, who are Allah Kulisha in Qadir. Allah Khalakal Mota. 
Blessed be the one in whose hand lies the dominion and he wields power over everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is he? The one who created death, this world, and life, next world. See which one of you is the best indeed. Look what Allah Ta'ala calls this world. He calls it death. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Human beings are asleep. And when they die, that's when they wake up. Huh? This is Kalam Allah wa Kalam of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Prophet when he sees the reality of that day Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I see Ruhat. I see a Prophet with Ruhat. Ruhat like eight, nine, ten people behind the Prophet. I see some prophets, Ruhtain, 16, 17, 18 people, followers behind them. So I see some prophets with three, some prophets with two people, some prophets with one, some prophets zero, nobody behind them. No, they had no followers, Satan prophets. He said that I see Sawad, I see a, a masses of people. And I say, my ummah, my nation. He said, that's not your nation. Thalika ummah, tilka ummah Musa. That's the nation of Moses. Great number, Banu Israel. Then the Prophet ﷺ looks and he sees yani, Sawad Azim, great masses in the tradition, Yasud al Ufuk. It blocks out the entire horizon. He says, That's your Ummah. Look at the followers of the Rasul. That's your Ummah. Block out the horizon, Yawm al Qiyamah. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahih wa Sallam. SubhanAllah. What does it mean to be from his Ummah? Then, who does he see? 70,000. They show him 70,000 from his ummah. Men, whom? Who are those? The angels inform him, those are those who entered into paradise. They have no judgment, no punishment, no reckoning whatsoever. Straight into Jannah. 70,000. Hadith in Al-Bukhari. Sahaba, can you imagine the Sahaba? Sitting with the Rasul. Prophet says that, without any reckoning, without any punishment, Prophet stands, leaves, goes into his house. <laughs> finish, finish. Yani, what happens next? Yani, who are they? So Sahaba begin to, yani, Yahudun in the Hadith, in the Bukhari. Who are the 70,000? Some of them say, sure, facing Ashab Muhammad. It's hey, Sahaba, they say, Sahaba, it's us. That's us, 70,000. Mushkila there, eh? Where's the mushkila? Prophet Sallallahu dies with like 124,000 companions. Eh? The dominant opinion. Although if you carry it up with Ibn Hajar, al Asqalani says 40,000 companions of the Rasul when he passed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 70,000. Speaking about. Others say, no, 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 it's not them. Then who is it? It's those who are born in Islam pure and that's how they live their life. They never associate partners with Allah Ta'ala. That's who the 70,000 are. Look at the opinions of the companions. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exits once again and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Mada takhudun fi? What is it that you're all sort of speaking about? What is it? Ya Rasulullah, the 70,000. And you see the himma of the Sahaba? They ain't speaking about the ummah that blocks out the horizon. They talk about the 70,000, Yani. I want to be from the 70,000. Who are they? And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Bukhari, he says, الَّذِينَ لَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ وَلَا يَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَكْتَوُونَ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ That's what he says. They're, they're, they're people who are not superstitious. First, they don't deal in superstition. Yani, superstition haram. They're people, look at his words, they don't deal with ruqya, amulets. Amulets halal. They're people, لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ They don't even seek amulets. Seeking amulets, Halal. Wala. And here, yaktawun. Yaktawun, they don't use what's called causerization. And in medicine, causerization here. Hock homes upon a physical injury. Causerization, and halal. But they, ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. They rely upon nobody but Allah Ta'ala. They don't even deal in medicine. You know, those people, they put doctors out of a job. They shut down all hospitals. That's what they do. That's like Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, medicine is haram. Ahmed ibn Hanbal. We don't deal in that. A tabib is Allah. Like Abu Bakr al Siddiq upon his deathbed, shall we bring you a tabib, a doctor? I'm rather it tabib. It's the doctor who made me ill. Allah. That's Abu Bakr al Siddiq. Allah says. 70,000. 
شوف ذا صحابة One of the great companions name is Ukash ibn Muhsin Ukash ibn Muhsin says Ya Rasulullah Ud'u'Allah and akun minhum Make dua on one of them Me, me, ana, Ukash That's my name you Remember me, Ya Rasulullah Uhud, remember me, Uhud You gave me a stick When I took the stick I raised it and it became a sword That's me, Ukash ibn Muhsin Ah, me Make dua on from them <laughs> The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Anta minhum it is an issue of dua. I saw them, and you're one of them. And it, and it. Then another man says, Ya Rasulullah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi famous with, Sabakaka akuka ukasha. Your brother Ukasha beat you to it. He got there first. Huh? Look at that. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Raftum, that's what he sees, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, elite 70,000. And those elite 70,000 are really important for us. Because they are the imams of shafa'ah. Ah. They're the imams of intercession, ah. those 70,000. You get to them, you're getting to the Rasul of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. <coughs> and so there he is at his hold, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the life pool. That in the riwayah, it's like from Sana'a to Hadramaut. In the riwayah from Sana'a all the way to, to Ayla. Riwaya Sana'a to, the, to, to Adan, to, to um, Uman. Riwaya from Sana'a all the way to Medina to Munawara. Huge in terms of size. Every prophet has one. But our prophet is the biggest. <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the broadest. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sweetest. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told us a Bukharian Muslim. Yani it's sweeter than honey, more <laughs> fragrant than musk, more purer than milk, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. The one who drinks from it will never be thirsty ever again. Just get to it and you drink from it. You have to drink from it. Not only drink from it, but you've got to drink from his hand. Ah, that's it. That's the secret. You drink from his hand. Because as we learn in a hadith in the Sahihain of people who get there and then the angels descend. Yaqtatifun, snatch them. Begin to snatch them and throw them into hell. Angels, throw them. Regardless of the distance, throwing them into the midst of hell. And the Prophet is looking at his words, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. The angel said, Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad, what did they do after you? Beddalu wa ghayyaru. They begin to alter your sunnah. They begin to alter your path. This is what these people did. What is the Rasul? It's not that or the throwing. It's the words of the Messenger of Allah. Suhqan, suhqa, suhqan, suhqa. Distance them, distance them. Distance them, distance them. That's what he says. The Rasul, Rahmatullah Alameen. Get them away from me. They change my way. The mercy says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa wa sallama. That's the hold. Yeah, That's the second place you'll meet me. Where's the third place, O Messenger of Allah? In the Mizan. Of the scales of judgment. Remember, what's difficult about the next world, we don't have what we call linear time. Okay? It's not a progression of events occurring inside of linear time. That's not the day of judgment. It's a new world, new laws. Time takes on a completely different signification. Okay? So now we speak about the mizan, judgment. <coughs> yeah, you stand upon the plains of judgment for 50,000 years. Allahu Akbar. You are standing. The sun is brought to your head in the Hadith al-Bukhari. In the riwayah, meal. Meal. The Sahaba said it's going to be one meal, you can call it a mile, distance from your head. That saw 93, yeah, honey, million miles away. That if it was one iota closer, we would all combust. That's what they said. One iota closer. Now, life upon earth would be in, uninhabitable. And we couldn't live upon it. One iota closer. And upon that day, it's brought meal, minkum, from you. What's a meal? Check. The Sahabi related, he didn't understand the meal. He said, does a meal mean a mile? Could mean that in the language of the Arabs. Or does a meal mean, you know, kuhl? When you apply kuhl to your eyes, that stick, that's called a meal. Is it that distance from your head, or is it one mile distance from your head? Regardless, it's a hot day. Regardless. And then a human being begins to sweat and sweat and sweat until you're drowned in sweat. <coughs> Some of them, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sweat is only up to their ankles. Some of them, he said, up to their knees. Some of them, thighs. Some of them, he says, khasira. And he does this, puts his hands upon his hips to the khasira. 
He said, so many of them today, 30, to their breast, their chest. So many of them, he does this. Yel jamuhum. They are bridled in sweat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So many of them, Allahu submerged Allahu inside of their own sweat upon that day. Yeah, and naked, uncircumcised, and barefoot. I thought the human beings upon that day, standing for 50,000 years, Allahu naked, Allahu barefoot, uncircumcised, drowning in his own sweat. Hekad upon that day. And he's, subhanAllah, naked, barefoot, uncircumcised, drowning inside of your own sweat. We ask Allah Ta'ala for safety and security. And again, it's with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahib Salama. Look at the Sahaba, and these great women. You see on the tradition of Um Salama, you see the tradition of Sayyidina Aisha, and Um Salama asks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa when she hears naked, she says, Ya Rasulullah, naked? People will be gazing at each other. Aisha, she says, naked? People will be gazing upon each other. Look at the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi The day is too dire for that. What type of yeah, day is too dire? Huh? Imagine that type of day. A day when as Tashakhusul Absa. And Yom upon that day, Hadid, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And your vision is focused. There's no movement of the eyes upon that day. You're in a state of shock for 50,000 years about what's okay. Huh? And some people, big shock. When they didn't even believe the day would have came. What type of shock is that? Uh, upon that day. 50,000 years. As Allah Ta'ala says, Yom, وَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَ Look at that. When the blast comes. The blast of Israfil. What's the nature of the day? Yom يَفِرُّ مَرْهُ مِنْ The day when a person will flee from his brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي From his mother and from his father. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي Sahiba, literally, even from your girlfriend, you're going to flee from your girlfriend. Flee! Whoever your sahiba is, وَبَنِي and your tribe. Then what does Allah Ta'ala says? لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِ Every human being has an affair upon that day that renders them oblivious to anything else. What is that affair? Yourself. Nafsi, nafsi. How am I going to survive this? The prophets were true. Sadaq al mursalun The prophets were true in what they said. This is the day, Yawm al haqqa the day of reality. And you stand and you stand and you stand. Some of us, we won't even stand in human form. Some of us, our deeds begin to manifest as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawm al sara'it. On the day when your sara'it, when the secrets of your reality become manifest. And that secret now begins to take over your form. <coughs> your spirit, yes, we with your form. You know, in this world, in this world, form, physics, dominates metaphysics. The form dominates the spirit. That's the nature of our experience inside of this world. World number three, the barza, uh, the next world inside of the grave. Your spirit dominates your form. It's like a virtually an absolutely spiritual world, the barza. As we discussed inside of our last gathering. Yom Qiyamah, Day of Judgment, Yestawiyan. It's all in balance, perfect balance. That's the day of the scales, the day of the Mizan, the day of the balance. But in that, the spirit is going to grip the form. What we mean by that? That who you really are will manifest. And look at the prophets as have informed us. Some of us, we're nothing but monkeys. So upon that day, we just manifest as monkeys. That's how we are. Qirada. That's our reality on that day, the form. Some of us, we manifest as pigs upon that day. Pigs, that's it. Running around, snorting upon the day of judgment. <laughs> Others are going to manifest as what? Blind. Like as Allah Ta'ala, Ma'ishi the donkey in Surah Taha. People raised upon that day blind. <laughs> Why am I blind? When in the world I could see, Ya Allah. Well, you were blind to my signs in the world. This is your reality. Raised blind. Some deaf. Some dumb. Some with their tongues right there, with pus coming out upon their chest. All described, seen by the Prophet. Different manifestation of the human being. And we just stand and we stand and we stand until it gets to the point. No, no more. 
And he mean the prophesies him says, people now would rather be cast into hell than to remain standing. Rather cast into hell than remain standing. And so they faced inclination, the ulama. We used to go to people in the world. We go and ask the ulama, how we get out of this situation? The ulama who know better, the anbiya, the prophets. And so you go to a tradition now, which is mutawatib. Deny the tradition, you exit the fold of Islam. And so the first prophet you go to is Adam, alayhi salam. They say to Adam, Adam, ya Abel Bashar, you're the father of man. Ah, Allah Ta'ala in tradition, he created you, quote unquote, with his own hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek intercession for us. Saying Adam, alayhi salam, what's his first words? Nafsi, nafsi. Thinking of myself. Because I was the one who, who ate from that tree, the fig tree. I mean, because of me, all this is happening. All of this is happening because of me. At that primordial moment inside of Jannah, when I ate from the fig tree, the forbidden tree, that Allah Ta'ala commanded me not to eat from. Hey, in Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Moses and Adam have an argument. The Prophet Adam and the Prophet Moses. What's Moses' point? See these problems? It's all because of you. I suppose it's funny. But wait for you, he wouldn't be in this predicament. That's what he says, Moses. And Adam alayhi salam says, yeah, Moses, you're going to take me to account for something that Allah Ta'ala decreed 10,000 years before I was created? This is destiny. That's what he's saying to her. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, فَحَاجَ آدَمُ مُوسَى Adam silenced Moses. That's the proof. Uh, and one of the great Imams, MashaAllah, spirituality, he says, SubhanAllah, he says that, you know, if I was in Adam's situation, at the tree, and I saw that tree, that fig tree, I wouldn't have eaten the fig. I would have eaten the tree. That's what he says. He says, why would I have eaten the tree? Destiny. Look at the great good that come forth from that moment. Why is it we focus upon the bad? Any? The good that comes from the moment as well. I mean, if it was just about the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al kafa it would suffice, eh? His manifestation rests upon that moment inside of Jannah with Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salaam. But Adam, his issue is not the tree or the good, it's the commandment of God. God told me to do something, and I failed to do that. Although he's not in an abode of what? Of law. An abode of legal or moral responsibility. Not, Jannah's not, there's no moral or legal responsibility in Jannah. But still, this is the, the word of his beloved, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he fears how Allah Ta'ala would deal with him. He says, today, Allah will vent anger, the like of which he's never vented, or the like of which he will never vent. That's your muqyama. He says, ila ghairi, go to other than me. Ila nuh, go to the prophet Noah. And so then the procession goes to the prophet Noah. The prophets have informed us from the time you're upon the stands, 50,000 years. Till you get to Adam is 1,000 years. You're on 51,000. From Adam to Nuh, another 1,000 years to get to him. We're on 52,000. And when you get to Nuh, <coughs> Nuh says, no. Nefsi, nefsi. Myself, myself. Because of me, as in Surah Al-Nuh, at the end of Surah Al-Nuh, I raise my hands to Allah Ta'ala. And ask Allah Ta'ala to not leave a single house of a disbeliever upon the face of the earth. And the only people who remained were him and his family. That's all that remained. Everybody on the face of the earth was a disbeliever. Only Nuh and his family remained. Khalas. Everybody drowned. Destroyed. Upon the prayer of Nuh. And Nuh is like Moses. No joke. Yani. They're the no joke prophets. Like the Prophet Sallallahu said upon Badr. He said, Umar, you're like Nuh and Moses. And when they had the prisoners of war. The Prophet said, what should I do with the prisoners of war? Abu Bakr says, let each prisoner of war teach one. And, he, and teach ten. Khalas for their freedom. Or pay a ransom, they can go. Umar ibn Khattab says, kill them all. Every one of them, kill them all. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, Abu Bakr, you're like Jesus and Ibrahim. Subhanallah. That's one type of prophet. He says, Umar, you're like Nuh and Moses, Noah and Moses. That's what you're like. And them prophets, they're no joke prophets. And if you mess with them, they'll destroy you. They ain't come with mercy. That's not what they came with. Come with law and you mess with the Lord of God, they will destroy you through prayer. Look at Moses, destroys the entire earth. Look at uh, yani, Nuh, destroys the entire earth, apart from his family, upon his dua. Look at Moses about the one who, in Surah Al-Araf, imprisons him inside of the tear. And when the Prophet Sallallahu in the wilderness, 
And, and he dies in the wilderness, Moses. And then we ask Allah Ta'ala, why have you did this to me and the children of Israel? And Allah Ta'ala says, because of the dua of the Canaanite. Bal'am ibn Ba'ura. He made dua against you. Just to stop you in your tracks. Because you were about to march upon the, the people of Canaan. They didn't, want, didn't want to die. And his people didn't want to die. Look at Moses. And he told you, you know, some of us, we can understand that. Like, you're going to evade war. You will lost, our Allah stopped them in, in the tracks. We can understand that. Moses, no. What's Moses? Raise his hands. Allahumma jarridhu min al-iman. Our Allah strip him of faith. Take faith out of his heart. Completely out of his heart. And Allah strips faith out of the heart of Bal'am ibn Ba'ura. Dies in kufr. Ashab al jahim Mentioned inside the Quran. The Surah Al-A'raf. They're yeah, prophets you don't mess with. Huh? So, and you get to Nuh. Ain't going to go well. Nuh is like nafsi nafsi. Sorry. Huh? He said because of that dua. That one dua. I mean look. Look at, him, look at the difference between Nuh and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's a great people, but our Prophet the greatest Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every Prophet was given a dua. One dua. Know the riwayah, every Prophet was given three duas. That one dua of Nuh, that's how he used it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every Prophet has used their duas. Except me. I'm saving mine to your muqiyamah. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm saving mine to your muqiyamah. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our teachers say, subhanAllah, you know the wisdom of that? Because in the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah Ta'ala, that he took his mercy, and he divided his mercy into, into 100 parts. And one part of that mercy, Allah Ta'ala sent to this world. Every manifestation of mercy is 1% of divine mercy inside of this world. Everything, from the mother to the child, from the husband to the wife, from every, the animal to its what, to the horse to its foal, what have you. Every manifestation of mercy is just 1%. And then Allah Ta'ala, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah has saved 99 to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Yawm Al-Qiyamah is a day of 99% divine mercy. If you understood that, where would you make your dua? In the world of 1% or the world of 99%? When people need it most. That's where he saves his dua for, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know what his dua is? Ummati, Ummati. SubhanAllah. That's his dua. My nation, my nation. So said on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he had judgment. We'll see that the Prophet ﷺ is given a ledger. A ledger. Inside of the ledger, there's two of them. One, all of the names of the people of paradise. Another, all of the names of the people of hell. That's what's inside of the ledger. He showed it to the Sahaba inside of the dunya. Sahaba meet the Prophet inside of the desert. The one who doesn't read, he has two ledgers, books, huge things inside of his hands. And he says, Sallallahu in this is the names of everybody in paradise. In this is the name of everybody inside of hell. Look at them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then what does he do? He throws them, they vanish into thin air, in front of the eyes of the companions. They return for them, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. There he has, the sigil. He has in the names of the people of hell. Then one by one by one, he's bringing them out. Hakkadah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Malik, who's the guardian of hell, he says, Ya Muhammad, are you leaving nobody for the wrath of your Lord? Leave one. And you put me out of a job here. I guard hell. I need people to guard. One by one, he brings them out. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And here we're at Nuh. Nuh sends them away. Khlas. Go to whom Ibrahim. Today Allah vents wrath, the like of which he's never vented, the like of which you'll never vent. They go to Ibrahim. Ibrahim, la. No. Thalatha kathibat as inside of Sahih al-Bukhari. There were three sort of, yani, twisting, quote unquote, of the truth inside of al-Bukhari. Saying Ibrahim, no. I think of myself. Yani today Allah vents wrath, the like of which he's never vented, or will he ever vent? Go to Moses, son of Imran. You know what ain't going to work with Moses. 1,000 years to say Namusa alayhi salam. They get to Moses, Moses says, no, I killed a man. Qataltu nafsa. And Allah Ta'ala, wa kathalika katabna ala bani Israel. Anna man qatala nafsa kanu qatala nasa jami'a. Likewise to be prescribed for the children of Israel, that the one who kills a soul, then it's as if they've killed the entire humanity. Look, Allah Ta'ala didn't say justified or unjustified. He just said to take a, a human life. Moses fears that moment. He says, nafsi, nafsi. No. In a riwayah, go to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, the riwayah, go to Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. And so they go to Jesus, son of Mary. Jesus, son of Mary, says, today, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. And Allah will vent anger, the like of which he's never vented before. And in the riwayah, Jesus doesn't mention anything. Jesus, huh? That's a special prophet. 
And, and what makes him even more special, he's from the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. Manifest at the end of time. From the Ummah of the Rasul ﷺ, and Jesus son of Mary. He doesn't mention anything, Jesus, about anything that he's got to worry about. But what's the reality? That's in Surah Al-Ma'idah. What's Jesus worrying about? What his people did to him. Huh? That, Allah Ta'ala, did you command the children of Israel to render you and your mother as gods besides me? Jesus, yeah, he's standing as an accused Yawm Al-Qiyamah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth chapter in the Quran, by Allah. You know what's in me. I did what you commanded me to do. You know what's in me, and I do not know what's in you. Look at Jesus. I only did what you commanded me to do. That's all I did. But what's in the depths of my soul? You know what's in the depths of my soul. I mean, look at that. That's the humility of Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam. Even in that position, he's still blaming himself. It's as if I wouldn't be on the stand if I had no blame. And he's absolutely free of all blame. But it shows you that is a different type of prophet, Jesus on the Mary alayhi salam. Really different, Jesus on the Mary alayhi salam. And then he says, Ila Muhammad, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When they get to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Allah. this is mine. That's his weight. Allah. this is mine. That's all he says sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is his position. This is what's called Shafa'atul Uzma. The supreme intercession. In the Quran, it's called Maqam al Mahmud. The praiseworthy station. In the hope that your Lord will raise you on the praiseworthy station in Surah Al Isra. Every time you hear the Adhan, Allahumma Rabbi, Hadi Dawat al Tamma, Wa Salat al Qa'ima. Ati Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al Wasilata. Well, for the letter, what Daraja Tarafiata, what Bahu Makam and Mahmoud, raise him on the praiseworthy station. Which one? Aladi Waetahu, the one you promised him, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamar Rahimin in the Kalatu Khlifun Yat. You do not, do not betray your promise. And the Prophet says, and then he goes before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wa yes, Jud, and he prostrates in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prostrate. And then the Prophet says, and I begin to praise Allah. Tuftah alayya al-Muhammad. I begin to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that people have never praised him. And I just praise him and praise him and praise him and praise him till he hears those words. Ya Muhammad. Oh Muhammad, irfa' ra'sak. Raise your head. Subhanallah. And he sell to Ask and you'll be granted. Shafi' to shafa. Seek intercession and intercession is yours. That's Allah speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What's the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Let judgment begin. Huh? That's the beginning of judgment upon judgment day. And now people will be judged. You've stood now for an excess of 55,000 years. How long does judgment last? First and the last. Humans, jinn, angels, even animals. The Prophet Sallallahu said there's not going to be no two animals. One who's locked his horns with another, oppressing the other, save on Yom al the day of judgment, they resurrected, and one now has retribution. Allah said, now you lock your horns against him. Everyone resurrected, and now day of recompense. Huh? Sell to Atah, let judgment begin. 55,000 years. Yani 55,000 years. Yani. As we said, yani, in, in, in anthropology, they say man has existed in their understanding of man upon earth for no more than 55,000 years. That's what the moderns tell us. And one day for us is 55,000 years. And then when you stand then, when the scales are now erected, judgment in its entirety, how long does that last? 24 hours. All done and dusted. That's through the barakah of the Prophet ﷺ. 24,000 and 24 hours. Two, four types of people as you stand up on the mountain. There are those who are not going to be judged, for better or for worse. We spoke about the 70,000. Not judge for the better, but they're also a polar opposite. Not judge for the worst. As they're standing upon the, the mokif, upon the plains of judgment, then in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu paradise is now brought to the right side of Allah Ta'ala's throne Allah. by angels, brought to the throne, paradise. Do you see paradise right in front of you? Huh? Likewise, hellfire is brought to the left side of Allah Ta'ala's throne. The hadith, it's strapped, chained with 70,000 chains. Upon each chain is 70,000 angels. Yeah, it's like 4.9 billion angels who are now bringing hellfire. When they bring hellfire, hellfire frees its captors, frees itself, escapes its captors, and then begins to surround everybody upon the Day of Judgment. 
begins to surround. Eh? Going around the people upon the day of judgment, standing upon the plains. And that's what you see in the tradition with even the great prophet Ibrahim Yabruk. Great prophet Ibrahim, and the, the quote unquote the father of faith by name, that he falls down to his knees pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as hellfire surrounds the mokif, it just begins to consume people, <coughs> snatch them one by one. Who does it snatch? Those who will not be judged. Their crimes were too wicked for them, for the scales to be raised for them. Just like certain people's deeds were too good for scales to be raised for them. Okay, hekala, snatched one by one. Who are they? They say, Ahimmat al Kufr, the leaders of disbelief. People who were the cause of the disbelief of others. <coughs> Ain't going to be judged. Uh, snatched into the midst of hell. And then it's only the Prophet in the hadith, the Prophet then takes his hand and he runs towards hellfire, holding his hand down like this, and hellfire begins to back off. Hellfire can't touch the Prophet, can't touch him. And so as he walks forth, hellfire backs off, and then the angels now begin to recapture hell, and then they chain hell to the left side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. There the scales are erected, and that's the last place for Sayyidina Anas. And you meet me at the scales. They said, Well, Ukhti al Thalatha al Mawadi. I'm, I'm going to be at one of those three places. Over hell, at the Sirah, the bridge over hell. Or at the hole, the life pool of the prophets. Or, likewise, khalas, the last place, at the Mizan, the scales. Only three beings are permanently at the scales. Three permanently. Who are those? The Prophet, وسلم, as we said, he's the shaheed. He's the witness. And then whom? Gabriel and Mikhail, the two archangels. Permanently at the scales, alongside the Prophet, وسلم, judging humanity. That's difficult for the Prophet ﷺ, really difficult to be a witness. Why? Because he condemns people to hell. He's the witness. And that's why in the tradition of saying Abdullah bin Mas'ud, when the Prophet summoned Abdullah bin Mas'ud, the great companion, I said, Iqra alayya al-Quran. Recite the Quran to me. Recite it to me. Abdullah bin Mas'ud begins to cry, Wa alayka unzil. It was revealed to you. You want me to recite it to you? Because I love to hear the Quran from other than me. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Sallallahu sometimes he would quote and quote Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would go to the mosque without anybody knowing he's in the mosque. Just hiding inside the mosque, listening to the companions recite the Qur'an. <laughs> Look at his love of the Qur'an, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one night he hears saying Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, recite the Qur'an. And the next day he sees Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and he says, subhanAllah, Ya Abu Musa, you've been given one of the vocal cords of Dawood, alayhi salam. Your voice is so beautiful. Look at Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. This is the Rasul saying this to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, you were listening. If I knew you were listening, I would have given you a recital. And, ah, khalas, I was just sort of warming up my vocal cords. Well, yani, and I knew you were there, it would be something different, Abu Musa al-Ashari. Radiallahu anhu warda says. Huh? Saying Abu, Abdullah ibn Sa'ud begins to recite the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Ali Imran, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, Surah Al-Nisa. When he gets to Nisa, saying Abdullah ibn Sa'ud, anhu warda, then he gets to the verse. In the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, How will it be? when every ummah has a, as a witness, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we bring you as a witness ala ha'ula, against everybody. Allah. How will you be? Allah Mas'ud said, then I look, Prophet is just crying, crying, sallallahu alayhi sahih wa sallam. Then he's saying, hasbuka, 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 enough, 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 he's saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Difficult to be the witness, because you can condemn. Hakkad, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahih wa sallam. And if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq, huh? it's a day of judgment, a really long day. Huh? And the journey is just beginning, really just beginning for us. Huh? There's a long way to go until the point of eternality. We have to be resurrected. We have to sort of move beyond the confines of the scales of judgment, scales of light erected. That what, as the Prophet sallallahu informed us, that the scales of light and that good is raises, is rise. scales are opposite to this will. Scales, that what bad falls down, becomes heavy. Okay? Comes down. Because the nature of the next world, the opposite of this world. So good is heavy. But things that are heavy, next world are raised. But it's good. Things that are light, this world, they're raised. They go down inside of the next world. The heaviest thing inside of the next world is what? La ilaha illallah. This is in conclusion. That la ilaha illallah. That's the heaviest thing inside of the next world. La ilaha illallah. In a beautiful tradition in the Mustad of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the Prophet Sallallahu informs us of a man who stands the Omul Qiyamah. And the angels were are commanded by Allah Ta'ala, Gabriel and Mikhail, bring forth his deeds, his book of life. Alhamdulillah, this is from our book of life now. We're writing the page of today. Huh? The book of life. Every single day, you have two pages to your book. 
that they've written the seal that Maghrib or the seal that Fajr. And they send to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalas, every single day. Each day, two pages. Huh? You should be someone who's aware of that. You do something wrong, edit the page. Make sure the bad deeds not written. How Tawbah? Make Tawbah to Allah Ta'ala. Our Prophet Sallallahu informed us. If you don't make Tawbah immediately, khalas, make sure you make Tawbah before Maghrib. Make sure you make Tawbah before Fajr. Because then it edits, wipes it out of your book. So your book goes up clean, pure to Allah Ta'ala. Every day, two pages for every single person. If you don't make Tawbah by the Maghrib, don't worry, make Tawbah thereafter. It won't wipe you from your book, but there'll be a footnote. On such and such a day, he made Tawbah. The footnote will be there inside of your book. Two pages, two pages, two pages, two pages. Yani khalas, yom al qiyamah, the book sealed. Final edition. Uh, sealed. Suspended at the throne. <coughs> Judgment descends. Allah commands the, the books to take flight. They land upon your neck. Uh, angels are then going to come at judgment, at the scales in and of itself, and wrench it from your neck. Read your book. Like, this is your life. That's the first line in the book of every single person. Read your book. First line in everybody's book. You see it at your muqiyam. If you take it on your right hand, alhamdulillah. It's all good. Yani ashab al yamin. We all want to be from ashab al yamin. That's what we want to be from. The people of the right hand. You take it on the side of your left, bad news. That's ashab al shimal. People of the left hand. Bad. Or even worse, min warai or you take it from behind your back, even worse. Bad side. First one to have his book in his right hand, in the hadith, say no Umar ibn al-Khattab. First one to receive his book inside of his right hand, say no Umar. Radiallahu anhu wa Really, really good sign. And read kitab And read your book. Huh? Let me read my book. That book, everything. Say no Aisha radiallahu anha wa rda'ah. And she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Allah Ta'ala. Wa yuhasib hisaban yaseera wa yintaluqu il ahli masroora. And Allah Ta'ala said that one will have a light reckoning. Uh, a light reckoning. Because these are the other two types of human beings. Phase two, ones who are not judged for better or for worse. Now the ones who are judged at the scales. So in Aisha asks, what does it mean? He said, and Yasira. What is a light reckoning? The Prophet says, Al Arab. Al Arab, Ya Aisha. Arad, Arab. What Arab literally means for us, media language, showtime. You will see your life. Al Awza'i, the great Imam al Sham, he said, Urda, Urda. Frame by frame, you will see your entire life. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ Allah says, whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it then. Atom's weight. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ شَرَّةٍ ذَرَّ شَرَّةٍ يَرَهُ Whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it then. Frame by frame your life plays out. That's it. That's the easy reckoning. I, Allah, don't... You know, like we now, I mean, think of where these things come from. There's no director's commentary. Because if there's a director's commentary, you're destroyed. If Allah asks you a question, pauses your life, and then asks you, why did you do this? You're destroyed. As a He then says, whoever now is interrogated is destroyed. In another, Menrukisha Uddim. Whoever is interrogated now will be what? Will be. Uh, uh, Punished, chastised inside of the hell of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's judgment. But the heaviest thing, la ilaha illallah. And so this one comes forth in conclusion. And the Prophet Sallallahu says when they ask for his, why his book, his book is 99. Not pages, scrolls. You just roll it out. The Prophet said the angels roll it out. He said, ila medd al basa. What does that mean? To the horizon. It's just rolled out to the horizon. And then when it's read, all of it is sin. This person is a sinner. Yet he has a profession, as a craft. That's all he does is sin. And then Allah Ta'ala questions to the angels, is, is this yours? Is this book yours? It's my book, he says, Ya Allah. Allah Ta'ala questions to the angels. And he describes, Raqib and Atid, they didn't wrong you. Scribe could make a mistake, huh? Not angelic ones. Maybe. He says, no, that's me. It's me. They, 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 they wrote it correctly. Remember, not the angels, too. Only one was writing. Who was that? Ati, the left hand side. Evil, 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 evil. Such and such a day, such and such a place, against such and such a person. That's all they're writing. What this person did. Allah Ta'ala said, you ain't got no good. That's all I have. Then just, at that moment, the Prophet says, 
something falls from the throne, from beneath the throne. And it's a bitaka, bitaka like a piece of card, small piece of paper. Then the angels take it. Upon it, what does it say? La ilaha illallah. That's all it says. And so Allah Ta'ala says, put, la, put this upon one side of the scales, and all of his, well, all of his infinite scrolls upon the other side. The slave says, Ya Allah, how's that going to benefit me? You see what you see, Ya Ali? But this is judgment, khalas, fair is fair, so you were judge. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, so they put angels, this one piece of paper, quote unquote, on one side of the scale, and 99 infinite, quote unquote, scrolls upon the other side. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, فَثَقُلَتُلْ بِتَاقْ uh, That that piece of paper becomes heavy. فَتَارَ تَصُحَفْ And then not just that the other pages go down, but they just disappear, vanish into thin air. That's the weightiness of La ilaha illallah. Weighty, weighty, weighty. Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that anybody who has an atom's weight of faith will come out of hell. Atom's weight. The smallest imaginable, imaginable particle of faith will come out of hell. You know what's even greater than that? His next statement. Anybody who has an atom's weight of good, he said, will come out of hell. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know what's even greater than that? His next statement. Anybody who just says, La ilaha illallah, will come out of hell. As we said, Man qala la ilaha illallah will exit hell. That's his statement, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is a bewildering statement, huh? Bewildering. And we know people who, their mission in life was just to get people to say, La ilaha illallah. Just say it. Hey, say la ilaha illallah. Say it. That's all I want. Just say it. And I'll help you, your man. Just say la ilaha illallah. Give me one. Uh, give us la ilaha illallah. Oh, heck that, huh? Help us, you Muqiyam, just a mere statement. Give me a la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Just that statement, la ilaha illallah. That helps us upon, there is no God but God. Huh? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq, inshallah ta'ala. Discussion of the day of judgment, it's a long discussion. The river of life that you're submerged in and you're reconstructed. Inna insha'na hunna insha'a. As Allah ta'ala says in Surah Al-Waqi'ah. Very, we will recreate them as a brand new creation. That's in the river of life after the whole. And then, it's the doors of paradise. Huh? doors of paradise. The first one to knock upon those doors is the Prophet ﷺ. I'm the first one to knock upon that door, he said ﷺ. Regardless of what our women folk think, uh, in the hadith of the Prophet as he approaches paradise, a woman comes forth. Uh, khalas. Women, I uh, always probe to know. Uh, they just come forth, khalas, yani, trying to get into paradise. What's up? Hey, who are you? Yani? Who may you be? Uh, trying to get into paradise before me. And she says, who am I? Who am I? I am a mother who raised my children in the world. That's who I am. Uh, paradise lies beneath the feet of mothers. What does the Prophet Sallallahu say? Man, we go in together. Look at, look at the statement of the Rasul. And he has the keys. And look at the keys. What, what are the keys for paradise? The keys for the, of paradise are two statements. Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. It's not physical key. He gets the paradise. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Every door opens simultaneously. Yani, you get there and you say, Allahu Akbar, it ain't opening. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it ain't opening. This is voice recognition. Paradise advanced, Yani. <laughs> and it's voice recognition. And it opens with the voice of the Rasul. <laughs> uh, we ask Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq, inshaAllah Ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses and embraces inside of his mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embeds us inside the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to see that face. Huh? Allah ta'ala allows us to see that face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to see that face. Allah ta'ala allows us to keep us inside of his community to be seated close to him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. sallam. Al-Qurabi ilayya majlis an yawm al-qiyama hasanukum khulqa. The closest of you to me upon the day of judgment are those of you who are the best indeed. Oh Allah, make us of those who are the best indeed. Oh Allah, grant us the khulq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 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 The attributes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi the dua of the Prophet and render all of our duas, our prayers unto you, Ya Allah, makbul accepted by you.